Hello guys, welcome back to this fragrant little corner of the internet. I have not filmed in a long time, so I'm coming at you with a lot of energy today. There has been a theme to the fragrances that I've been reaching for. I am freezing, it is cold over here. And in the crispest, crispiest, crispest of the cold, I love to accentuate this coldness. Now, what I mean by this is to contrast, not even to contrast, but to further enhance the iciness, the coldness, I love to reach for a super sudsy type of fragrance, like so soapy that it's hyper, hyper clean, hyper, hyper sudsy. I'm not much of a minimalist. I'm more of a maximalist. I think you kind of noticed. And just accentuating this is something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. So I'm gonna share it with you, one of my winter secrets, how to smell hyper diaper clean, not diaper, but hyper clean. I've shared some of my winter loves in my recent videos, but there is a definite thing, like it's me gravitating towards things that smell white. And one of them is by Misensir, and it is called Musk Eternel. So eternal musk. This is, a hyper clean musk fragrance. It has a lot of similarities to Tante Neige, which is, you know, basically supposed to smell like snow. It's so powdery. And this is, yeah, like eerily similar to Tante Neige. So if you know how that smells like, you will know how Muscatanel smells like as well. There is just a slight more creaminess within this one. It still is a very white powdery fragrance. So it is very floral with iris in the forefront. And we all know iris is the clean flower. So there will be more iris mentioned here. <laughs> the base of this is pretty sweet. It's Tonkai. And with musk fragrances, they can go in so many different directions. I have a musk video on like true musks. This one is a powdery musk. And yeah, it gives kind of baby powder vibes. And I like that. I really do like that. It's grown up baby powder though. It's not Johnson's and Johnson's. It is bougie baby powder. So check this one out. Just hyper clean. If you haven't showered, we got you. Okay, so back to the iris. Iris is the go-to clean flower. It's a little bit shy as well. So iris is reserved, but I like it amplified in this setting. So in the cold, in the snow, wear a clean iris. This one, I think, uh, Enfusion d'Iris, is a fragrance that a lot of people would tend to maybe push forward in the summertime because it is clean sheets. Clean sheets uh, in Tuscany, iris, but amplify it even more in the cold. Try it, I promise you. Hyper clean. Prada has a lot of very clean scents. They have a similar DNA in them, a similar vibe to them, so that you don't need a whole lot of clean Prada fragrances. If you have one, you kind of have the gist of <laughs> what it is that they're offering. So my one is the classic uh, Enfusion d'Iris. I mean, they have so many twists on this whole concept, but hyper clean to me is Iris. It just smells like these dry Tuscan soaps that you have down in a drawer and they come to life <laughs> with this. It's also quite complex. Like it's got some little incense undertone to it that makes it uh, quite unique. There's there's something about this, this DNA. So speaking of ice, I wanted to share with you guys, because obviously, you know, I don't work with fragrance brands and sponsors, but if there's one thing that I cannot keep my paws off of, it's jewelry. So thank you to Miss Blue Jewelry for sponsoring this portion of the video. I was actually in awe when I received the parcel. So I ordered two rings and a pair of earrings and just like the way that all of this came, the way that it was all presented. If you like the finer things in life, the way that I do, I know that Valentine's Day is coming up. Maybe you want to spoil yourself in the beginning of the year, setting your resolutions, and you want to have a gemstone to go with it. Oh, this jewelry is just so fabulous. So my birthstone is actually aquamarine. I'm born in March. And look at this aquamarine ring. They have all of the gemstones on their website. So it's going to cost you less than it would be to go to regular jewelers. It gives you that 
fine jewelry experience, but still the price is just really at a fraction. And if there's anything that I love promoting, it is luxury at a decent price. So the luxury experience, luxury does not have to be limited by a high budget. This ring right here is actually an engagement ring style, but you know, I'm engaged to myself. I didn't put it on the <laughs> engagement finger though. Um, and it's US measurements uh, on the website. So if you know your ring size, they actually help with that. Oh my gosh, let me show you this thing that came in the parcel. So they actually put this ring measurement thing in the parcel for me, which is so cool. It does sizes and half sizes, full sizes and half sizes. You can measure your finger with it. <laughs> <laughs> for next time and yeah so let me share these blue aquamarine earrings i was really eyeing the aquamarine necklace that they have on their website that is just so whoa luxurious to look at um but so i got the matching ring and then i got the matching earrings as well and look at this blue like this blue in the cold in the winter it speaks to me. It says something. It makes a statement. Please do check out Miss Blue Jewelry if you get the chance. I will have a discount code for you down below. And yeah, I'm just wowed by this. <laughs> like I have been wearing this jewelry every day since I got it. It's so glam. It's so fun. It's so New Year. I know New Year, New Me is a cliche, but it, it just brings me to life looking at these gorgeous gems. Ugh. Okay, back to the fragrances. Okay, I'm gonna talk about an obvious clean option, which we're not gonna forget the classics ever, are we? So, this is Chanel number no. five. Have you ever seen this bottle before? I'm talking about a fragrance no one has ever seen. No, I'm kidding. So Chanel number no. five. Chanel does and will always do that high-end Parisian clean aesthetic thing. So most people are familiar with Chanel number no. five, right? And this to me, Chanel number no. five is unisex fragrance. I've given this, I passed this to men, they wear it and they're like, wow, that actually worked wonderfully for me. Um, so, you know, this is the Iris, the Ylang, the Jasmine, the balm that is Chanel number no. five, the Rose as well. And the old formulation used to dry down a little bit more animalic, but if you wear the EDT now, the current EDT and in the cold, it smells actually clean. It smells like, it smells like diamonds. It smells rich and clean. Um, <laughs> so Chanel number no. five sister is number 22. Rumor has it that Coco Chanel was between these two on which one would become that commercial hit. And she chose the formulation for number five instead of number 22. But number 22 is the clean sister. Ooh, screechy aldehydes. So, soapy sudsy equals iris and it equals aldehydes. The sharpest aldehydes though. Aldehydes combined with animalics makes the aldehydes less clean, right? Um, but aldehydes just combined with clean florals is hyper clean, clean in the highest Power. It's really quite funny to see how the notes of these two fragrances are very, very similar. And then you've just removed the warmth in number 22. So this is cold, cold version. Cold, but still, I don't know, still charming. There's something charming about her, <laughs> him, her. And number 22, if you are a person who works in an environment where you just have to smell clean, like if you work in a hospital, for example, one or two sprays of this and you don't smell like the antiseptic, but you just smell like this lovely clean bubble that's wandering about. And I prefer number 22 in the winter. Like honestly, I cannot do number 22 in the summer. I have tried number 22 in the summer. The very first time I tried number 22 actually uh, was in the summer in my early 20s. And I bought number 22 as a gift for myself on my 22nd birthday so don't be telling me that younger people don't spend a lot of money on fragrances because i have spent money on fragrances <laughs> my whole life there is just nothing like number 22 i feel like i'm saying 22 a lot but there just is nothing like <laughs> number 22 when it comes to the cleanliness it's 
doesn't fit into any of the modern or current trends, so don't think that that's what you're getting. But, uh, wow, marvel. Okay, so speaking of rose geranium, I do have to share with you guys, I went on this perfume walk here in London by my friend Olga. I'm gonna have the links to the perfume walk down below. And we went into Floris and we discovered the Marilyn Monroe fragrance, which is called Rose Geranium by Floris. And shout out to Erin Parsons, by the way. Erin, if you're watching this, uh, I loved the feature that you had on Marilyn's scent. And this Rose Geranium fragrance, you can't even find it on the Floris website. It's like a bath oil or bath product. And I think they have like the hard soaps as well, the bar soaps. But this Rose Geranium is the sharpest fragrance I have ever smelled. Like I actually, you smell it and it just, it does remind you of Marilyn Monroe and you do think of her and you think more of like her personality as Norma Jean. This very simple girl, right? Like number five would be Marilyn Monroe Va Va Voom and then the stripped back, more innocent Norma Jean would be Rose Geranium. So I do highly recommend these perfume walks. Okay, the next fragrance is one of my top favorites to wear in the snow, like, ugh. It's so beautiful, it brings a tear to my eyes. I think that this would be um, maybe even categorized as modern number 22. So whereas number 22 smells like it's from a different era, it smells a little bit mature. This is like lab process number 22. This is number 22 if it were hipster. Are hipsters even cool anymore? This is number 22 if it were a TikTok dance. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> try to make it relatable. But this is called Rien, let me just share the fragrance with you. Rien, meaning nothing by Italie Baudrange. My, one of my favorite Italie Baudrange fragrances. And this is so hard to describe. It smells a lot like saffroline, which is this like saffrony, leathery accord. But it also smells like aldehydes plus, 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 plus. Like, it somehow can make you, if you close your eyes and smell it, don't read the notes again. Let's, you know, use them as guidelines, use them as guidelines or not use them at all. Use your imagination, your mind and think for yourself. Like if you close this, you could even imagine an iris. You could even imagine, you could imagine like a hot iron, a hot iron against a really white bleached sheet. It's a lot, right? And hence the play of the name of it being called nothing. And I get lots of compliments on this fragrance as well. There's, it's just really unusual. Uh, there's also the incense version. So Rien en Tense Sense, which is like this plus a hefty incense. And that's just a bit too much for me. <laughs> like it's a lot, it's good, it's great, but it's just a bit too much for me. I, I, I find that Rien itself is, it's a lot. It's good. It's good enough. <laughs> I can stop there. Yeah, my descriptions are getting weirder and weirder. Okay, the last fragrance I'm going to share with you guys today is an unusual one for this category. I think some people might think it's an unusual choice for this hyper clean theme, but I just love it and I've been grabbing for it and it has something to do with it also igniting something festive within me. So it's around the quince, which is a citrus fruit that is uh, very specific, very distinctive. And this is called Vara by Penhaligans. I think a little birdie said that Vara might be discontinued. I hope that it's not, but this is soapy. This is, if you're gonna take soapy and make it slightly fruity with that quince fruit in there, then definitely try out Vara. I find that it's just so different to anything else that I've smelled. It has a, a more classic Penhaligans style. So Penhaligans has their different lines and their heads are like their more modern fragrances. They also released some other potions and something um, fragrance line recently, which I've yet to try, but from their classic, when you see the bow on there, then you know that it's one of their classics and classics always come back in style or never go out of style. So you're not following any fragrance trends. Vara was created by Bertrand Duchaufour, which is one of my favorite perfumers, my top three perfumers. And it's just so unusual. It's so unusual that it does not get the understanding and the love that it should be getting. And I have this really centered around Soapy Quince. To me, this is Soapy Quince. <laughs> I'll have the notes around me or floating around somewhere so that you can see them further. But you know, Fragrantica says that this is an ambery fragrance. This is why I, uh, I don't trust Fragrantica at all. 
that's a whole other conversation. But um, Vara, it's, there's something like regal about it. That's also one of my vibes, isn't it? So that was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching along this kooky wacky video. I hope that you also enjoyed seeing some of my jewelry goods because I just love, I will not stop uh, with the jewelry. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video. Please let me know what you have been wearing if you are in this headspace of being hyper clean. What is your favorite soapy fragrance? Please share it with us. I'll catch you soon. Bye.